Hello and welcome to Everyday Mystic, an aid to your spiritual growth. I want to start by talking about why I'm making this video. In the spiritual awakening that many of us are going through and that many more will go through, beings such as the Holy Spirit and the Higher Self are becoming more and more tangible parts of a lived reality, rather than mere abstract concepts. The Holy Spirit has, for me, taken an increasingly central role in my spiritual life, and I truly believe that it is important for anyone on an awakening journey, to cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, my aim with this video is to talk about what I can say about my own experiences and knowledge to make it easier for those who wish to cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit to do so. With that being said, I've observed that there must be a strong connection between the Holy Spirit and the Higher Self. Now, I want to state clearly that I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit can be equated with the Higher Self. At the foundation, all is one. But this does not mean that we are our own gods, as our inflated egos might believe. On the contrary, this oneness is directly obscured by how much we are identified with and run by the ego. What do I want to say with this? Well, that the Holy Spirit and the Higher Self seem to have exactly the same function for us, which is, basically, to guide us, heal us, and let us take part in God's wisdom. So there must be a connection. Even if this is not something I know how to do, I believe that if we learn to let the Holy Spirit operate through us, we can also start performing miracles. The Holy Spirit, I've experienced in a very real, tangible way, as a living energy field that surrounds us and permeates us. This energy field is normally invisible, but as we wake up more and open up our third eye, we start to be able to perceive the Holy Spirit as subtle, swirling energies in the air. Once you've seen the energies, you cannot unsee them. On the other hand, the Higher Self seems to be more directly connected to the individual. But if all is one, what is really the difference? Whether we are talking about the Holy Spirit or the Higher Self, both are incompatible with the ego and, as already stated, when we let go of the ego, we start experiencing more of the oneness. A question that arises is, how can we even know for sure that we have an individual higher self? The higher self is connected to the objective and not the subjective, so what comes from it ought to be the same for everyone. I'll leave this discussion for now. Sorry for not providing the clear answers that many others do. But I want to more have a discussion around these subjects than make absolute statements about things that I'm still figuring out. And I know that, just by talking and thinking about these matters, we increase our chances of experiencing what we are talking about, as what we focus on seems to grow. Now, let's move on. In classical Christian theology, the Holy Spirit is described as the third person of the Holy Trinity, alongside God the Father and God the Son. Thus, the Holy Spirit is conceived as the divine presence dwelling within us, guiding, comforting, and enlightening believers. Just as the Holy Spirit is an integral part of the Christian faith, the Higher Self plays a significant role in the spiritual journey. The Higher Self is not bound by any specific religious doctrine, it is a universal concept that transcends religious affiliations. Often described in psychology and spirituality, the Higher Self is that inner essence, that reservoir of wisdom, and that beacon of truth within each of us. It serves as a source of guidance, inner strength, and authenticity. But how can we really know that the Holy Spirit is just there for Christians? As already mentioned, one striking similarity between the Holy Spirit and the Higher Self is their role as inner guides. The Holy Spirit, according to Christian belief, guides individuals along their spiritual paths, helping them discern right from wrong. Similarly, your Higher Self acts as an internal compass, offering insights and intuitions to help you navigate life's challenges. Have you ever experienced a moment when a gentle voice within you seemed to offer guidance or insight? It probably comes in the form of a thought, but the thought rings true in a sense that separates it from the usual noise inside your head. This inner voice, often attributed to the Holy Spirit in Christian traditions, resonates with the concept of the Higher Self. It's that quiet, intuitive knowing that transcends logic and reason. But there is more to this. Both the Holy Spirit and the Higher Self serve as illuminators of truth and self-awareness. The Holy Spirit helps Christians connect with divine truths and deepen their understanding of God's will. 
In a parallel manner, your higher self assists you in discovering your authentic self, unveiling your purpose, and guiding you toward personal growth. Transformation is furthermore a central theme in Christian spirituality, often attributed to the influence of the Holy Spirit. This influence is believed to enable individuals to transcend their old ways and embrace a renewed, spiritually awakened life. Similarly, your higher self plays a pivotal role in your personal transformation, encouraging you to shed limiting beliefs and embrace personal growth. In this way, you become less governed by your ego and more governed by your higher self. The Holy Spirit is also often associated with moments of divine stillness, offering solace and communion with the divine. Likewise, your higher self invites you to tap into the inner sanctum of stillness, where you can connect with your true self and find peace amidst life's turbulence. Another profound resonance between the Holy Spirit and the higher self lies in their capacity to empower and inspire. The Holy Spirit empowers believers with spiritual gifts, enabling them to serve and uplift others. Similarly, your higher self empowers you with the gifts of creativity, intuition, and inner strength inspiring you to make positive contributions to the world. Now, think also about this in relation to authenticity. The Bible contains several stories about how spirit-filled people have not just found authenticity within, but spoken absolute, undeniable truth, in the face of fierce opposition. Furthermore, both the Holy Spirit and the Higher Self emphasize the idea of union and connection. The Holy Spirit fosters a sense of communion with God and fellow believers, promoting unity within the Christian community. Likewise, your higher self encourages you to recognize the interconnectedness of all life and the unity of the human experience. This is what we are talking about when discussing recognizing our oneness, not just as an abstract concept or spiritual jargon. The Holy Spirit flows through each and every one of us, connecting us at a deep level. Ultimately, the Holy Spirit and the higher self both guide us on the path to wholeness. The Holy Spirit seeks to bring individuals closer to God, facilitating their spiritual journey toward completeness. Your higher self, too, guides you toward a state of wholeness, where you integrate all aspects of your being and align with your true purpose. Now, let's move on and look at developing intuition in relation to this, as this is something that we will need in the times that we are living in, where it becomes more and more obvious that we no longer can rely on our intellects to navigate the world. Ultimately, I believe that we need to put our lives completely in the hands of God, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I would say that first, you need to start making it a habit of letting let intuition be part of discernment and decision-making. When faced with choices, take a moment to connect with your inner wisdom. Your intuition can provide valuable insights to guide you toward choices that align with your spiritual path. Something that may sound contrary to this, is to at the same time learn to go with the first choice that comes up, when no clear best choice is available, instead of allowing your thoughts to start an endless exercise in weighing pros and cons. Of course, don't start with major life-changing decisions, but with smaller ones. The more you do this, the more you will learn how a choice should feel when it's right. Again, be careful with this when it comes to bigger decisions. Next, embrace moments of silence and inner stillness, just as the Holy Spirit is often associated with divine stillness. In this quietude, you can better hear the whispers of your intuition. Pay attention to that inner voice within you, whether you consider it the guidance of the Holy Spirit or your higher self, as well as what is going on in the present moment. Mindfulness, meditation and deep breathing, can help you become more attuned to your inner world. This is tricky as most of us have allowed the chatter inside of our minds to run on autopilot for most of our lives, and we've learned to listen indiscriminately to it. And we also need to learn what whispers are just driven by wishful thinking, personal desires, attachments, aversions etc. The more you can cultivate a state of acceptance, the easier this will get, as you are less invested in certain outcomes. Therefore, especially when you are new to this, you need to check your intuitive guidance with your intellect and emotions. You should get a feeling of rightness when you get this right. This will not always work perfectly, especially in the beginning. I'm still more or less a beginner at this, I might add, even if I've had much more success with this lately, as I've been working much more on it. So, trust that intuition unfolds gradually. Be patient with yourself as you develop this skill 
and remember that it deepens with practice. The more you can stay centered in the present moment, and not allow your thoughts to wander aimlessly into the past or future, the better this will work. You will start paying attention to what is going on in life more, which will open you up to the Holy Spirit's guidance through the events in your life as well. You might notice strange synchronicities and that details that previously passed you by start speaking to you. There are also physical sensations to pay attention to. As I've understood this through reading about it, this can be different for different people. But for my, a very clear sign has been pleasant shivers in my body. They often, but not always, emanate from the heart area. Next, it's fruitful to reflect on your experiences and feelings. Set aside time for regular self-reflection. Ask yourself meaningful questions about your life, purpose, and values. This introspection can help you tap into your intuition and make decisions that resonate with your true self. Journaling can be a powerful tool for self-discovery and accessing intuitive insights. It allows you to gain clarity about your thoughts and emotions. I must admit that I'm rather sloppy with this at the moment, as my schedule is pretty full, and I have a hard time making the time to do this. But, I've noticed that when I rush through life to get as much done as possible, it usually ends with me getting less done, because I get sloppy, make mistakes that I have to correct later, and prioritize the wrong things. But it's hard to break this habit. Furthermore, other people are important. Just as the Holy Spirit fosters a sense of unity within the Christian community, seek connections with like-minded individuals who support your spiritual growth. Sharing insights and experiences can enhance your intuition. Don't hesitate to seek guidance from trusted spiritual mentors or counselors. They can offer valuable perspectives and help you refine your intuitive abilities. But don't disparage if this is a lonely journey for you right now. You will eventually be guided to the people that you are supposed to meet, especially as more and more people are waking up all of the time. Finally, cultivate an open and receptive heart, just as the Holy Spirit is associated with love and compassion, because your intuition is much more closely related to the feeling of love than your other faculties. When you approach life with love and empathy, your intuition becomes a force for good, helping you connect with others on a deeper level. There is something to the saying, that every moment ultimately offers a choice between love and fear, even though this might be a bit more complex. The more we feel that we can trust God with our lives no matter what, the more we can lean into this higher guidance. To summarize this exploration of the Holy Spirit and the Higher Self, we have uncovered a profound resonance between these two concepts. Regardless of your religious background or spiritual beliefs, the inner guidance, transformational power, and connection to truth and unity that both the Holy Spirit and the Higher Self offer are universal themes that resonate with the human experience. I encourage you to meditate on this and consider how these two concepts interweave in your life. Reflect on the inner voice that guides you, the moments of stillness that bring peace, and the empowerment to inspire positive change. Whether you see it as the Holy Spirit or your higher self, recognize the divine spark within you and the potential for growth and transformation that it represents. Developing intuition is a journey that aligns with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and the higher self, whether you see it as the same or separate entities. It involves cultivating inner stillness, practicing mindfulness, and listening to your inner voice. Embrace community, seek guidance, and trust the gradual unfolding of your intuition. With time and dedication, your intuition can become a trusted companion on your spiritual path, guiding you towards a more authentic and purposeful life. As with so many things in life, this has to do with our memory. To remember to include the intuition, ultimately the guidance of the Holy Spirit, in your life. As you focus more on this inner guidance, through becoming consciously aware of it throughout the day, meditate and reflect on it, and learning more about it, the more it will grow in your life. This, by the way goes for many things in life. That's all for today. If you liked the video, hit the like button, as this helps the video to get noticed. Also, feel free to share it on social media and other places. And if you want to see more of my content, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you always get notified of new videos. I post content every day, and I do my best to always offer something valuable. Also, check out the description and comment section for more things that me and my wife are doing.
Thank you for your time.